Fukushima. I'll start on that. GE built six nuclear reactors near an earthquake fault in Fukushima. Mark one GE reactors. I knew the three GE engineers who designed those reactors and they resigned in 1975 in protest saying these reactors were faulty. They testified before the Congress. Did it make any difference? No, because of the money. The man in charge of GE said, well, we can't stop them because that means the nuclear industry will be over. It'll be dead. How dare he? And you know, the weapons makers are building the global gas oven now. And so are the fossil fuel companies creating the global gas oven. Why? Because it's money. How dare they do that? How dare they? And I ask them, why are you making cruise missiles? And they'll look at me and say, I'm making money. And I say, but what about your children? You've got young children. And they look at me with eyes like dead stones and they say, I'm making money. And then when they're on their deathbed or their children are dying, they fall into my arms and tell me all the wicked things they've done because they know. So all through their life, that beautiful soul with which a baby is born, that purity remains present in every person. And only when they're facing the coal face of death do they then admit that what they've been doing is, is evil. And I would say evil, because we're destroying the earth. I'm glad this new pope is into it. What would Jesus do? <laughs> Here it is. OK. Now, I don't have a, a, a laser, laser beam thing. But, of course, these screens are, are way over there. But this is Europe. But there's a, yeah, there's a black dot up there, and that's, Fukush that's Chernobyl. And the very dark red or orange areas are areas where people cannot live anymore. They're so radioactive. And this yellow, and you can see in Sweden, they got a hell of a dose up there, really big. In fact, I went to Sweden just after the accident. Stupidly, I ate reindeer. Reindeer eat lichen, which concentrate the cesium, and the reindeer got very radioactive. I just felt so stupid. But so Norway got a hell of a fallout. Sweden, Finland, um, Germany, Belarus, uh, parts of England, they had to close down 300 sheep farms in the United Kingdom because the lambs were so full of cesium. And they, they, the, the government said, you've got to close down your farms. And the farmer said, well, for how long? And they said, oh, about 100 years. But it's not, it's 600 years. What you also need to know is that Turkey got a huge fallout. I've been to Turkey, they're very agrarian, they make lovely food. Um, but the Turks were so annoyed with Russia, they picked all their radioactive tea and sent it to Russia so they can enjoy the radiation. Um, don't buy Turkish dried apricots, don't buy Turkish dried tomatoes or anything. Don't buy anything from Turkey, because you don't know which is radioactive and which is not. Um, and as I say, if you buy European food, you don't know if it's going to have cesium in it or strontium or plutonium in it. Do you know what I mean? OK, this is Fukushima. So I'll just briefly go through it. Um, they built six reactors. And what they did was there was a cliff, but they excavated the cliff to build the reactors at sea level. Um, behind the six reactors is a mountain range, and water pours down from the mountain consistently under the reactors and out to the sea. And when the reactors were intact, that was fine. But what happened was there was an earthquake. And they lost their external power supply that supplies the pumps to circulate a million gallons of water in each of the six reactors. Now, un because of that circumstance, they put big diesel generators the size of a house underneath the reactors so they switch on and keep got the pumps going. But then in came the tsunami, and it drowned the diesel generators. They were so desperate, the men were running out, getting batteries from the cars to try and keep the pumps going. Well, within three hours, three reactors, units one, three, two, and three, started to melt down. Because the, this uranium is so hot 
and full of these radioactive elements so hot it turns into molten radioactive lava and it melted its way through six inches of steel in the reactor containment vessel down onto the floor, concrete floor, and almost certainly we think it's melted its way through the concrete floor into the earth. And the, 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 do you remember the China syndrome with Jane Fonda and Jack Hawkins? Yes, the nuclear industry call that the, the melt through to China syndrome because it starts going into the earth. Now the problem is that the water is still pouring down from the mountains and it pours over these reactor cores and the water becomes radioactive, very radioactive, and that goes into the ocean. So for four years, every day since Fukushima, 400 tons of radioactive water are going to the Pacific. Tons. There is apparently the nuclear industry never predicted anything like this. They don't know what to do. They can't get near those radioactive cores because if a man stands there for about a couple of seconds, he'll get radiation illness and die. One spent fuel rod, if you stand next to it for a few minutes, you'll get radiation sickness from the gamma radiation coming off from it, right? So the, and they send robots in to try and work out what's happening. The robots get fried. It's going to be radioactive like that for hundreds and hundreds of years. And there's no way to stop the water coming in from the mountains, dissolving the radioactive elements, and the water is becoming more and more radioactive every day. So what happens is that the algae, algae bioconcentrate, cesium or whatever, by orders of magnitude, then the crustaceans eat the algae, same thing. Little fish eat the crustaceans, big fish, tuna, eat the little fish, and then there's us. So they're already finding fish, tuna in California with um, Fukushima radiation in it. And it's going to get worse and worse. Now, the Pacific's a very big body of water, and of course the radiation gets diluted. But the solution to pollution by dilution when it comes to radiation is fallacious because of bioconcentration in the food chain. OK? And I'm in Australia. So um, the, the, there was a hell of a release of radiation initially, and the wind was blowing from west to east across the Pacific. The ambient levels of radiation of, of, of noble gases, argon, krypton, and xenon, which don't concentrate in the body, but they do get through the lung, and xenon is very fat soluble, tends to concentrate in the fatty abdominal pan of the upper thighs where the gonads, the testicles and ovaries are, very high energy gamma emitters. I used to use xenon in ventilation perfusion scans in my CF patients. It, it, these elements went up 40,000 times above normal in Seattle. Radiation fell in Boston all over the country. Now, the two air masses of the northern and southern hemisphere don't mix at the equator, so you, you're the only ones that got the fallout. If there's another earthquake greater than seven on the Richter scale, the buildings are very fragile. And one of them, one, two or three, could collapse onto the molten core. God knows what could happen. I told my son in Boston, if that happens, I'm flying you to Australia. He's got two little children. And your government is not measuring the ambient levels of air coming over from Fukushima. It's not measuring the sea, and it's not measuring the fish. How dare they? Hillary Clinton signed an agreement just after the accident that you would keep importing food from Japan. I went into a sushi restaurant in New York recently. I said, where are the fish from? Japan. Japan. And the fish are so radioactive along the east coast of Japan, you can't believe it. Um, so never eat Japanese food again. Rice, green tea, miso, vegetables, fish, that's it. No Japanese food and do not go to Japan. Because even if you go to the south, you don't know where the food is being sourced. The government is encouraging the farmers in Fukushima, because it's a rich farming area, to start growing everything again. And they're selling the stuff in London. And Cameron, who's the Prime Minister, you know, he goes and eats some. These people are very stupid. 
Well, they know no biology and they're not doctors. And they're, they're sci most politicians are scientifically illiterate and medically illiterate too, I would say. Um, and they're selling it in, in, you know, Taiwan's banned Japanese food and uh, another country's just banned it too. Cars being exported from Japan, second-hand cars going to Russia and the like are being returned because they're so radioactive. Not new cars, but second-hand cars because the, the um, filters into the engine and to the passenger apart department are very radioactive. If you measure the soil in Tokyo, Tokyo got a hell of a fallout. Some of it is so radioactive, it would be classified to be sent to radioactive waste dump in America. 35 million people live in Tokyo. Um, I know the man, Naoto Khan, who was the prime minister. During the height of the accident, he was thinking about evacuating Tokyo. Of course, you couldn't, 35 million people. But a lot of radiation got down there. Um, and so we're just now seeing the tip of the iceberg with the children developing thyroid cancer, but soon there's going to be an epidemic of leukemia and then all sorts of solid cancers of every organ. Like you would transpose Chernobyl data to Japan, because Japan is much more heavily populated, densely, than the areas around Chernobyl. The doctors have been told not to tell their patients that, that the, ra the symptoms could be related to radiation. That's wicked. Uh, the new Prime Minister has passed a law to say that any journalist who writes uh, honestly about Fukushima could be jailed for 10 years. The IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, is working with the Fukushima Hospital to build a new cancer hospital. That tells you everything. So I'll just walk you through these pictures. So that here was, here's Fukushima before and after the earthquake. And you can see at the bottom, it's, it's a bit hazy, but there are three reactors damaged because what happened was, as, as the heat built up, a hydrogen was released from the water, and the hydrogen, of course, is explosive. And there were three hydrogen explosions. And at unit two or three, there was also a nuclear explosion, we think, in the fuel pool, because parts of the fuel are found 20 kilometers away from the reactor containing plutonium. So, uh, <laughs> OK, here's, um, just look at that. Can you, can you believe it? That's inside a reactor, but you can't really see that. Um, this is the fallout, and on, on the, uh, the accident occurred on the 11th of March, 2011. So um, seven days later, it's just hitting the west coast of America. Then uh, three, 10 days later, it's gone right across America and dumped some stuff. And then se several days later, it's start starting to circle the globe. Incidentally, although the two air masses don't mix at the equator, water goes around the Pacific, down your west coast, and now they're finding the radiation in the water in Canada and Seattle and Oregon, and then it'll go down and to Australia. And fish swim a long way, and they don't necessarily follow the currents. So we could be catching radioactive fish in Australia. No one's talking about it. There's a huge press cover-up. Huge. Why? Because the nuclear industry is very powerful. And most of the media don't really understand it anyway. This is just Japan showing... Well, what happened was the Japanese knew where the, radio, the wind then turned and blew towards the Japanese. The, the Japanese knew where the radiation was going, but they didn't tell the people because they didn't want to create panic. Panic. So the people fled into the path of the highest radiation doses. Oh, that's just... And then these are some of the elements, and I've told you about them. Cobalt-60, iodine, strontium, cesium, plutonium, uranium. Uh, now, see these ginkgo leaves at the bottom? They've got dead marks on them. That's where... Ra this is in Tokyo, where radiation landed on the ginkgo leaves and killed parts of them. If that was happening, people were breathing the radiation into their lungs, weren't they? 
and if it's getting into the filters of the cars, it's getting into people's lungs. If you measure the vacuum dust from apartments in Tokyo, it's extremely radioactive. Um, now, you won't see this very well, but here's a child in the upper corner on the left-hand side um, from Chernobyl, severely deformed. The other little boy, he's got elephantiasis. He's got huge, huge legs. And then down in the other corner are two children, one microcephalic, tiny head, both very mentally retarded, and there are thousands of such cases. This is the book on Chernobyl I talked to you about, which you really should get from the New York Academy of Sciences. It's the most alarming medical book I've ever read in my life, and I've read a lot of medical books. This is a study I commissioned, carbon-free, nuclear-free, Within, oh, by, by 2030, you can be carbon-free, nuclear-free. Wow. Don't forget that this place is a, it's a carbon-producing hotel. Every time you walk through those doors, where's your electricity? Or, or it's a cancer-inducing door. Are you getting your electricity from the reactor at Tampa or coal fire? Does anyone know? Mostly coal. Mostly coal. So, all of these are coal um, global warming doors. They open in front of you. Just be aware that all electricity cre is created by the burning coal, which is creating the global gas oven. The temperatures might be six degrees centigrade hotter by the end of this century, which is antithetical to life. We can't survive at those temperatures. The temperatures in Australia are getting so hot now, I can hardly stand it. Of course, I'm old, but I... It's really scary. It's really scary. And it's only just started. So be aware how you use electricity. It's not there for the taking. But if you had a solar panel on every building, if you had solar panels on every parking lot, if you had electric cars, you plug them into the solar power during the day and take it back and plug it into the house at night and power up the house. Windmills everywhere. Upgrade your grid. It's so simple, and Americans waste 28% of the electricity they use. Don't ever use a clothes dryer again. Hang your clothes outside in the sun. That's what we do at home. They smell nice, and if you're up in the east and it's cold, hang them by the furnace in the, in the cellar. They dry in a flash. GE makes good things for life, like clothes dryers. Oh, you've got to use one. Dishwashers. Oh, you've got to use a dishwasher. You can't wash your dishes by hand. How dare we? Oh, carving knives. You just stand there and go and carve. So, this is so stupid. And you know who pushed the electric house? It was Ronald Reagan, who I spent an hour and a quarter with in the White House alone, trying to teach him about the medical effects of nuclear war. His IQ was about 100. And I came out and said he's got impending Alzheimer's, which he did. So carbon-free, nuclear-free, you can get that if you go to my website, helencaldicott.com, there it is. Now, these are the birds. There's a wonderful evolutionary biologist called Tim Mousseau, who's studying the birds and animals in the exclusion zones of Chernobyl and Fukushima. These are the barn swallows, and they have deformities. You can see little white patches, they're mutations. There are tumours. Uh, number E is a tumour. Their beaks are crooked. The, the bottom, the tail feathers are abnormal. What happens to birds happens to us. We test all drugs on animals to make sure they're safe for us because we're all the same biological systems. The work he's doing will be worth a Nobel Prize. He's exposing himself to very high levels of radiation. These are the birds, and they've all got cataracts. Remember I told you radiation causes cataracts? These are the cataracts of the birds. Lenses are opaque. These are the number of nuclear power plants in Europe. And guess what? In the Ukraine, where Chernobyl happened, there are 15 nuclear power plants, and there's a war going on there between Russia and America. <laughs> and America's pushing Putin into a corner, and for the first time since the Cold War ended, Russia and America are confronting each other militarily. Putin's put his weapons on a higher state of alert. 
and probably so is America. They're both conducting belligerent, provocative nuclear war exercises near each other's borders. Nuclear war could start tonight by accident, by design. On 9-11, they nearly launched a nuclear war because no one knew what was happening. And a nuclear war, I'll talk about it later, takes an hour to complete. Russian missiles take an hour, half an hour to get to you and half an hour back. There are 60 H-bombs targeted on Washington, D.C. and 10 on New York. There would be lots down here because you've got Disney World. I'm kind of joking. This is a tomato grown near Fukushima. Mutations. Now, these are all the elements in the reactor, and I won't go through them, but you know, you only hear about cesium and strontium and stuff. There are over 200 elements in a reactor, and they all get out when it melts down. And I'm changing it now. See? Lots and lots. There are six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight isotopes of plutonium, neptunium, americium, curium, californium, berkelium. These are named after the physicists who developed them or where they developed them. And that's it. Now, what I haven't mentioned, um, and I'm nearly finished, is the radioactive waste. Every year, 30 tonnes of radioactive waste are made in each nuclear power plant around the world. There are over 400 in the world. That waste, according to your EPA, must be stored isolated from the environment for a million years. And the nuclear industry has a goal to say they've got the Waste Confidence Act. What does that mean? They've got confidence that in time, they will work out how to store radioactive waste safely for a million years. How dare they? What idiots? They're worse than peanuts or, you know, who's the guy who works in the reactor in The Simpsons? Homer. <laughs> Duh. There's no way to store it safely and now they're going to put it in Yucca Mountain, which is made of pumice, you know, pumice stones. Very, very um, porous, yep. Oh, but they've got to put, and it's over an aquifer that supplies uh, Las Vegas. Uh, and the stuff's going to leak very shortly. And they're putting it also in Texas. Oh, they put it in poor communities, ecological racism. But imagine this, years hence, people wake and the stuff's going to leak and get into the food. People waking in the morning, the breast milk already radioactive, the baby's being born deformed. Huge incidence of genetic disease, there are 2,600 genetic diseases cystic fibrosis, diabetes, haemophilia, you name it. They're my specialties. Children getting cancer at the age of six instead of 70. This is the biggest public health hazard the world's ever known, and we've done it. To turn on our lights and make nuclear weapons to blow up the planet. The splitting of the atom changed everything, save man's mode of thinking. Thus, we drift towards unparalleled catastrophe, and men still think they can fight and kill each other. Killing is over. If we keep killing each other, bombing, killing innocent civilians, blowing babies to bits, we're going to blow ourselves to bits and destroy God's creation. Thank you. Thank you.